No, okay, Mr. Speaker, I'm delighted to have an opportunity to address this issue. And before I um, go to the bill, I'd just like to assist the member from um, from Auckland, Jamie Lee Ross, about his experience is obviously rather limited about what happens at the ports of Auckland. I suggest that maybe he's not got a lot of union experience, but he might like to go and count the number of secret ballots that have already been held by the union in this industrial dispute. He might like to go down there and check it out before he makes those statements. The Green Party, Mr Speaker, considers this bill in the same category as the immigration bill, which suggested that boatloads of migrants would arrive en masse by the Tasman Sea. And it's a bill, again, looking for a problem, or is there a more sinister dimension? Is the bill, indeed, is the bill trying to legislate a time-honoured practice of the secret ballot over the right to strike so that it can chip away at the right to strike itself? And the technicalities in the bill allow this outcome. If a union can be challenged legally for failing to follow the letter of this law or even cannot prove they held a secret ballot to the employer, the strike decision can be undermined. Now, the Green Party holds dear the International Labour Organization position on the right to strike. The right to strike was won through sacrifice and suffering, and any moves to use the law to technically undermine its power is basically abhorrent. Union membership. Mr Speaker, is voluntary. No one has to join and no one has to strike. Unions hold ballots. That's their business and not the businesses of the employer or this parliament. How the unions conduct secret ballots to decide their industrial action is an internal matter. Like all bills, this bill has a context. And that context is a government who sees unions as a problem rather than an essential part of the industrial relations arena. And if you cannot strike or decide to strike without the interference of the law, there's not a lot left. The bottom line for workers in this country, and indeed in the world, is the right to withhold your labour, our labour. No one wants to do this because, light bulb moment perhaps for some people, when they're on strike, workers don't actually get paid. They don't get paid and they can't feed their families. Have a talk to the AFCO workers right now about feeding their families. And they only do this, they only take this collective agreed action at the end of the road. So now under this bill, their decisions will be made subject to the negative scrutiny of people who don't want that strike to take place in the first place. It's, it appears there are always new ways to make workers' rights and striking unlawful. One hundred years ago, on November the 13th, Frederick Evans was beaten to death in Waihe by the strike breakers and the police. His death was, death was fortunately a rare occurrence in the labour history of this country, but not in the world. But it, it acts as a warning to anyone who thinks this is a frivolous matter, if anyone who thinks that going on strike is something that we take lightly. The workers from the ports of Auckland, Oceania and Tallies are enduring stress and financial hardship through lockouts and strikes, and they are struggling in an effort to negotiate fair pay and conditions and, crucially, the right to make collective decisions, including the right to strike. The fundamental rights of working people to organise themselves and to decide action for themselves without interference from the Crown or employers is what these now voluntary membership-based organisations need to have legally uphold, upheld. So I'm afraid the Green Party believes this bill is not a helpful contribution. It's not the result of many working people who are union members begging Mr Hanadi for assistance to help them with their right to organise. And the question of who would actually benefit from this legislation always has to be asked. And the answer would be the employer. It's no surprise when employers want to have a go at the right to strike, but let's not dress it up as something else. That's what's sinister. I stood on the picket line with the aged care workers of Oceania, the people doing the most vital job caring for our elderly for the minimum wage. They were not there because they were coerced. They were not there because they were manipulated or through shonky billet. They were union members at their wit's end on how to live on low wages. Let's respect their rights and the rights of unions to withhold their labour. The chant outside this house on Friday was, when workers' rights are under attack, stand up and fight back. Now, the national-led government has repeatedly engaged in attacks on workers since it was elected in 2008. I can think of the 90-day bill, the, the, the um, holidays bill, the right to, of, of union visit, um, to visit the workplace, the workers' ability to take sick leave without being interrogated. Sorry to interrupt the honourable member. 
I, I call Scott Simpson. Mr. Speaker.